The area with the petrified tracks must once have been swampy terrain crossed by a huge variety of animals. The tracks of small predator dinosaurs called trudontids are the most sensational find. Some of the tracks are 10 to 12 paces long. The scientists' theories are at best vague. Their dream is to paint as realistic a picture as possible of the animal, to bring it back to life, as it were. Maybe the Truton tids look like this, but there's no way of being certain. Each new find in the Orbankirchen quarry near Hanover causes a stir. Even the best experts know next to nothing about Truton tids. If the scientists manage to fill in the blanks, they'll become celebrities. Certainly, it's a, it's a very, very special site. With regard to the scale, uh, you know, I'll have to take a look and let you know. <laughs> yeah, th this is one of the interesting things about the Obernkirchen uh, locality, that you seem to have a high percentage of uh, uh, the, the two-toed tracks. In China, we thought we were very lucky to find only, only a few, uh, 10 or 15 tracks in total at several localities. So again, this is a, a surprise. 140 million years ago in the lower Cretaceous period, the world was a very different place. Two continents had formed, Gondwana and Laurasia. They drifted further and further apart and the primeval Tethys Ocean between them expanded accordingly. In the region of what is today the North Sea, the climate was humid and tropical. The North Saxon Basin was covered by an inland sea. To the west of Hanover, where Obenkirchen is today, there was a lagoon landscape with small sandy islands. Hundred and forty million years ago, things may have looked something like this. Inland seas surrounded by tropical forest. There is ample geological evidence to suggest this is how it was. The tracks in the quarry indicate the animals inhabiting this landscape included large herbivores. The iguanodon is well known. They were about 25 feet long and, when fully upright, were anything up to 10 feet tall. Another inhabitant the scientists have identified is the predator, the Allosaurus. They have a fairly accurate idea of what the Allosaurus and the Iguanodons looked like, but the raptor tracks still pose a number of riddles. Annette Richter and Torsten van der Luber from the Hanover State Museum are collecting clues. They painstakingly study every track. The petrified footprints, the only evidence the researchers have. Okay, super. Okay, great. Okay, this is Roman. Okay, so this is Roman, two, and uh, those are the fourth and fifth. These marks are the decisive pointer to the behavior of the animals. That is what makes them so valuable. It's still hard to say how many different tracks there are. We bet against each other and the estimates differ widely. And we've been at it for quite some time now. Of course, taxpayers might ask whether it's worth it. How many new facts are we actually discovering? But we do find out a lot, particularly from the footmarks. Where is the impression deeper? How did the animal actually move? We get plenty of paleobiological data to work on. Up to 25 features can be determined from one track alone the depth of the footprints, the breadth, the angle of the toes. The statistics help the scientists reconstruct the movements of the animals as accurately as possible. Some tracks actually run parallel. From this, the scientists conclude that the raptors cooperated and hunted in pairs. Okay, 
umso mehr wir Ausgaben desto The more we dig up, the more likely we are to strike lucky and come across one that stumbled and fell over, or we may find traces of a fight or some other unusual event. Davon oder es ist sonst irgendetwas Ungewöhnliches passiert. Ja, umso mehr Daten wir haben. The more data we have, the better we can ultimately verify the various theories that exist. The speed, size and weight of the animals are things the experts will only be able to determine after highly complex analysis of the tracks.